Hello everyone, welcome to Risk of Rain 2. This is one of my favorite games of all time. Top 5 easily, top 3 maybe even not top 1 because nostalgia is just too broken. But this is a third person shooter roguelike. Roguelite? I actually don't know the difference between those two. I'm playing as the Huntress, which is one of many characters in the game. Don't worry, I'll explain what I just did, what's going on on the screen. But before that, what is this game? Well, your goal is basically to survive as long as you possibly can, get to the final boss, punch him in the nose, and then get home safely as these monsters constantly spawn to try and kill you. This guy has a big laser beam. I'm just gonna dodge that real quick with my abilities. There are many characters in the game. I think I said I am playing as the Huntress, which is one of the two that you have when you first start up, when you first launch the game. Uh, I believe she has a bow that deals some damage and it also auto aims for you so this is a pretty good character if aiming is a, a little bit difficult or if you're not a first person shooter or third person shooter player. Uh, she also has this ability called Ballista where I can launch up into the air and all of your abilities pretty much have a set cooldown kind of like a MOBA uh, and you'll deal a bunch of damage with that. And then you saw my little evasion where I can teleport a short distance. Uh, you'll notice I have gold in the top left. These are lunar coins that I got very legitimately. Uh, that That's a little bit different. That's like across runs. Sometimes enemies will drop a coin and you can use those to get these other uh, unique items. And there's my final ability. It's the mouse two here, which seeks uh, shoots out a seeking glaive that'll bounce around, hit a bunch of enemies at once. It's a pretty cool ability. Uh, but essentially, every time you kill a monster, you're going to get a bit of gold. You use gold to unlock these chests or these... This is a shrine of chance, so it has a random chance to give me something or not give me something, which is, you know, I'm glad it did that there so I could show both options of it. And uh, you get more items to make you more powerful. So the one that I got at the start is a regenerating scrap. It's used with a 3D printer, which we'll find really shortly here, actually. Uh, and there is the oddly shaped opal that I got from that shrine. Luckily, it gave me that first, uh, that first attempt. It gave me that opal, and this protects me from taking some damage the first time I'm hit. But I'm actually gonna use this 3D printer here because I have this regenerating scrap. You'll notice that this is green, and then this printer right here is white. And there is different quality, different rarity of items. Every time you open a chest, there's a chance to get a white item. There's a chance to get a green item, which is you know, generally slightly more powerful. I shouldn't have used that there. I can't really see him. Uh, slightly more powerful, uh, rarer. You can see that this is utilized or, or is categorized, I should say, as uncommon, uh, usable once per stage. And then there is red items, which are super rare. I probably won't get a red item for a long time. A bunch of enemies are spawning now, but I'm gonna use this 3D printer just so you can see. It's gonna get rid of one of the items I have and replace it with whatever is here. And this one is a sticky bomb. It has a chance to attach a bomb every time I attack. And I'm gonna do that because getting some attack power, some additional damage, you saw that sticky bomb right there on that little beetle, uh, is quite nice. And these guys are spawning a little bit quickly, so I gotta KO them. I'm on monsoon difficulty, which is the hardest standard difficulty in the game. There are some modifiers that make it even more difficult. Uh, here I have a chance to get one of these three items, and uh, I'm just gonna pick this question mark. I don't really want this thing. So let's see what I get here. Hopefully it's gonna be good. A teddy bear. That's great. You can see it says chance to block incoming damage, which just based off that description, you can tell, you know, this is pretty good. Blocking damage, always a good thing. You don't want to be taking damage. At the start of the map, you may have remembered that I hit something. That's gonna be a rusted key. Not, not a fan of that right now. I hit something uh, at the start of the map which was a Shrine of the Mountain. So there's a lot of different things that could randomly spawn. Again, this is a roguelike, so completely random. When you die, you reset back to the start of the game. Uh, and so your goal is just to get as far as possible. And uh, I hit that, which basically makes the boss harder, which I might as well start now. So on every stage, you can see this objective is to find and activate the teleporter. And the teleporter allows you here. I got another green. That's actually quite lucky. I got three greens on the first stage, which I actually kind of don't want because I do want to get those 3D printed uh, sticky bombs, but that's okay. I'm just going to activate the teleporter here. Again, you can see this is the objective, and when you do that, it is going to spawn a boss. Now, because I hit that Shrine of the Mountain, which makes the boss harder, it's going to spawn two bosses. So I'm going to hopefully take these two bosses out, and as I'm doing so, I'm charging the teleporter by staying in this range. If I get out of the teleporter range, it's not going to charge anymore. And you kind of, oh god, that's a lot of lasers aimed at me. Uh, you kind of want to stay in that range because you want this to charge, because as time ticks up, the difficulty is going to get harder and harder. And that's really where Risk of Rain 2 gets interesting. You can see at the top right, I can't really uh, pause right now, I gotta fight these guys. It says I'm on easy. And as time is ticking up, that bar is getting further and further away. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about that later. You don't gotta worry about that right now. 
Uh, and so it's going to switch to medium, in which case I deal less damage to the opponents. They have more health. They deal more damage to me. More things spawn. It basically just gets harder and harder and harder. So your goal is to get enough items so that you can outscale the difficulty scaling on its own. And you can tell there's a lot of enemies spawning right now. My character uh, is someone that's not really the best at dealing a, a bunch of damage to a ton of targets. I do have that glaive that bounces around, so I'm going to be throwing that, that out whenever I can. Uh, sprinting as well. I, this character allows you to sprint and shoot, which is pretty unique. Most characters cannot do that. Uh, but I thought this is one of the most basic characters, so I'll use it in this introduction video. Just going to dash around here, kite around in a circle so these guys have trouble tracking me. Try to take out these bosses. That's my main target because you can't actually uh, ascend to the next level, teleport to the next level, until the bosses are defeated, even if you charge the teleporter all the way. Unfortunately, this auto-aim sometimes doesn't lock onto the bosses themselves, so I'm just going to keep kiting around in this circle, teleport out of the range of these little guys that'll give me a debuff, a slow debuff. And they're pretty close to being dead, you can see at the top of the map, or at the top of the screen, their HP is slowly dwindling the more that I attack them. That was kind of risky, I don't want to get hit by any of these lasers. You can see, the teleporter's at 99%, and so I basically just have to kill the bosses now, that's my final prerogative, my final mission here. And these bosses, unfortunately, have the ability where they can spawn a lot of enemies, so that's why there's a lot of these guys right here, beetle guards, um, that are kind of tanking the hits for the boss, and so... I'm going to try and get closer, target him with one more of those big ballista attacks. Oh, I'm actually close to death here. I can take it out. There we go. And I'm going to get a couple items for my troubles. Those are pretty good. These are uh, healing items, which I could use right now. It is quite dangerous to try and get them because there's so many enemies on the screen. So I'm going to sneak by, get that, get that. And I'm going to uh, escape that situation. I'm going to search the map, see if there's any more chests that I could possibly buy. Uh, you generally kind of want to spend about five minutes per stage. That's not a hard and fast rule it really depends uh, on everything going on in your run but because I'm explaining things because I was taking some time time is ticking up and like I said now we're on medium difficulty things are gonna start to get a little bit crazy but luckily I did get a chest I really want this item this is basically a chance to deal critical hits and what I really love about risk of rain 2 is that oh I should also mention that these deal one or, or whenever I deal damage I heal one and so I'm gonna heal two every time because I got two of them uh, yeah, that's what that Shrine of the Mountain did for me. Because I spawned two bosses, I got two extra. Or I got two items instead of just one. I'm just gonna leave this stage. We're gonna go on to the next one. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of synergies in Risk of Rain 2. 10% chance to critically strike, and there's gonna be a lot of items that, when I critically strike, I deal more damage, or I start attacking faster, or, you know, I start healing. A lot of stuff like that. And so you can really kind of get a custom build depending on the RNG of your run. I got Wetland Aspect, and there's actually a very unique event that just happened that's very rare, which is Warning. The Earth rumbles and groans with mysterious energies. This is very interesting. This is a super rare event. I did not expect to get this at all. But it means that all enemies that spawn are going to be this big guy that we already saw that shoots out laser beams. Unfortunately, these guys have a lot of HP. You can see they're just tanking all the damage that I'm dealing right now. So I'm going to zip out of there so I don't get hit by the big laser. Saw another one right here. Take it out with that ballista. Wow, I actually am really uh, lacking in the damage department. I'm going to have to get some good items here uh, in order to deal that quicker. But Risk of Rain 2 is... I mean, it's just perfectly designed. You can go to the boss right away. The boss will be on stage six, so we're working towards stage six. That's always the goal to keep in mind. Uh, also, you can see on the bottom, I level up and I deal more damage as I level up, so that's also gonna be a, a goal. As I kill enemies, I'm gonna level up more. Um, but yeah, you, you, but you can also choose to just go beyond stage six. You can loop the game infinitely. The more and more you loop, the more and more powerful you get. You may have seen some videos of people just wiping the entire screen simply by existing and standing there. You have so many items and so much synergy that just standing in one spot kills the entire screen of all enemies. That's really good. Okay, more crit chance is always great. This is one of the best white items to get, the common items. Uh, Again, I'm going to be looking out, maybe I can get a red item, a rare legendary item uh, on this run, but we'll see, it kind of depends on what maps I get. I'm going to pick up this one because this will give me an additional charge of my second ability, which is that glaive that will deal damage to multiple enemies. And we kind of saw in that initial boss that I was pretty weak when a lot of enemies were spawning, and so having a, a greater AoE ability is quite nice. Alright, looks like we got a Void Cradle as well. This is part of the DLC, I do have the DLC. Um, void Cradles are very interesting. They take away about 50% of your HP. I'll just use it right now so I can demonstrate. It's going to take away 50% of my HP, which I actually blocked because I had that teddy bear chance to block. And it's going to give me this purple item or pink item. And these are basically just another quality. It's not like it's necessarily better or worse than the whites, than the greens, or than the reds. 
um, but this is just like a different type of item. And this one is going to give me a lockbox on the next level that hopefully I'll be able to find. And that will give me uh, an additional item. Looks like I got an additional charge of that as well. I know there's probably a lot happening right now. Uh, I apologize if it's a bit overwhelming and uh, I'm trying to explain everything as I'm going along. But I'm going to search for this teleporter. You can kind of see these particles in the air. They let you see exactly where it is. And I just want to take this right away because, again, five minutes per stage uh, is the general rule that I think I kind of want to follow, at least for this beginner video. And so I'm already behind. We're going to have to take the time to charge this thing. And the big version of this guy is going to spawn. You can see there's the stone titan, there's the stone golems before, and this guy is going to shoot out a giant laser tracking beam. And so I want to try and avoid that. So many of these guys are going to spawn, I'm going to have to avoid a billion lasers, so we'll see if I get out of that, okay? But there's the giant tracking beam, so I'm going to avoid line of sight here. I'm just going to stand here so that I don't have to uh, get hit by that. Unfortunately, standing in one spot is a really, really bad thing to do in Risk Rain 2. You want to always, always be moving at all times because these guys will try to kill you and the huntress is one of the best characters to do that because she's so mobile she has that teleport ability she can sprint uh while attacking and everything like that so i gotta do some evasion uh luckily that teleport does charge very quickly and uh once again i'm really gonna try and ko this boss before anything else it's shooting out that big laser so i'm gonna try and avoid Something you can do to avoid that is get in really close range, uh, and that way it can't track you in time, you just run circles around them. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Also, I kind of want to group these enemies together, because something neat about this glaive is that it deals more damage by 10% every time it bounces. So if I can get the max number of bounces by making it bounce off these little mini guys, that would be great. I'm not in the teleporter zone right now, but at the very least I have a very good angle where this guy can't hit me. Uh, he does have this ability where he punches you into the air so you can get into his line of sight, but I'm just going to avoid that. The AI on these enemies in Risk Rain 2 is actually very good. Like that punch, for example, like tracks where you're going. It tracks your movement. Let's see what green item I got this time. I don't think I mentioned this, but you do get a guaranteed green item. Oh my god. Every time you KO a boss. So that's something that's uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, I'm just going to go up to the high ground here. You know, I got the high ground. High ground's always good. And all of these guys spawning is crazy. I can't believe I got that event. <laughs> that's like, that's very rare. I don't, I, I can count on one hand the number of times I've gotten this. I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's interesting for a first time video. But you can see that they have a lot of HP. They're pretty tanky. They're chunking. Uh, or I'm not really chunking a lot of their HP here and so I'm gonna basically just try and avoid as best as I can all of these laser beams You can see they deal a billion damage. What's really nice though is you do have one shot protection in this game If you look at my HP bar, which again, I can't really scroll right now There's a lot going on that I got to be careful about but uh, there's that little uh, hatch marks on the left side of it Which is one shot protection if I have more HP uh, or enough HP where that shows up I cannot die in one hit immediately so as long as I stay at least healthy enough, I can't instantly die. Although if two of them hit me at once, then I will. And I have so much gold right now, which is unfortunate. I really want to spend that on chests because leaving a stage with gold, you don't get to keep it between. It just transfers into experience points. So I got to time this pretty well so I don't get hit by all of them at the same time. And uh, luckily I'm able to do that. All right, I I'm going to hopefully get some more movement speed, some more damage. I'm going to search the map for some chests. Again, I didn't really play this too well, too optimally. Um, what is, what is that? That, that is a healing drone. There's also little robots, little drones you can get like that. That'll help you out. This guy is going to heal me up a little bit. The item I got, the green one, is really not great, uh, from that boss. So, so far my RNG this run has not been good. I did get this rare event, which I wouldn't say this is good RNG, to be honest. That item, 25 max health. You know, that's not going to help me duel any more. Deal? Duel? I was trying to say duel and duel, deal at the same time. Duel or no deal. Um, it's not going to help me deal more damage, basically, which I really desperately need at this point because, look, we're on hard difficulty already. Things are ticking up. I can't find chests for the life of me. I'll get this little drone guy, I guess, this little turret that stays on the ground. There's a little chest that I can buy. Uh, the pinging also helps because you can see, like, through the map where things are. Please give me something good. That's good. Deal more damage to enemies above 90% health. More damage, of course. Always, always good. Always welcome. Uh, I can buy one more thing, I think, with the amount of gold I have now, or two. Uh, so I'm going to jump up here, see if there's any chest. Doesn't look like it. Uh, I do want to do this as fast as possible because I don't want time to tick up once again. So I'm just going to buy this. Hopefully it gives me an item. Okay, I got lucky. And that is very good. Okay, so this Kiaro's Band deals uh, a high amount of damage, you can see, with a Fire Blast if I deal uh, a certain percentage of damage. You can see everything deals a certain percentage. The normal arrow is 150%. This is 250%. I believe if I deal over 300%, it's going to activate this tornado that'll deal a lot of damage. So I'm going to uh, hopefully, oh, I can just show it off right now. There's that tornado and it's going to deal a bunch and that's going to hopefully help me out here. All right. 
So now onto stage three, Scorched Acres. It's quite a pretty map, quite a beautiful map. My graphic settings are not the default one, so you know that is uh, if things look a little different for you when you play the game, that's why. Uh, and this tornado is on a cooldown. It's about 10 seconds, I believe. And so I kind of have to time when I use it, when I activate it, because uh, I want to time it correctly for when I deal that big arrow blast. Luckily, on the Huntress, that timing is pretty easy to get because the, the uh, Ballista has like an 11 second cooldown. It's pretty close to the 10 second cooldown of that other thing of the uh the runal or the the kiara's ban excuse me runal's ban uh is a different item there utility chest here mo more movement speed is great uh sometimes you can get so fast in this game that literally just moving uh, launches you to the top of the top of the map because you go over this little bump it trims you kind of like a uh, team fortress 2 with enough movement speed you trim so that's interesting uh gonna ko this guy right here how much how much gold does this cost this is 147 i'm not gonna wait around i can always loop back around and get it gonna go up to this higher level here and uh, here is that lockbox that I got from this item right here. Hopefully it gives me something good. Let's see, it'll let me choose and it's going to give me a chance of, you know, one of these three. I actually don't really want either, either of those two. So I'm just gonna get the same item that I got. I'm gonna get an encrusted key from an encrusted lockbox. I just solved economics. And so let's see, can I get a, uh, another chest here? No, doesn't look like so. I'm gonna go up to this higher level, use this little bounce pad. There's a chest that I can use. And once again, I'm going to uh, really need to pick up the pace here if I want to hopefully get a win, kill that final boss. The final boss, uh, I won't spoil anything for hopefully when I am able to face him, but he is quite strong, quite a powerful guy. Uh, gonna kill these guys. I didn't even mention some of these enemies you can see look a little bit different. They have that white outline on their HP. Those are elite enemies. So they're going to be stronger than normal enemies, stronger than... Uh, uh, you know, you're just your standard beetle guards or anything like that. Uh, they're also going to have a unique ability that they can use. So for example, these guys, when they die, they're going to do a big freeze explosion that I want to avoid. Otherwise, I'll be very vulnerable. I'm going to pick up this gasoline can. Uh, I got some good items that'll hopefully, hopefully help me deal some more damage. Going to take this teleporter right here. Let's see what boss it's going to be. Another one of those to have an additional uh, charge. An imp overlord. So this guy... He's going to deal a lot of bleed damage that I want to avoid. This guy is actually going to deal billion damage. I'm just going to take him out as my priority number one. And it also teleports. I walked right into that. That is embarrassing. Um, but yeah, you really want to avoid those because you don't want to get hit by bleed damage. I got hit again. I got hit again. Okay, I really don't want to lose a lot of HP here. Not only because, you know, losing HP is scary bad, but also because, here, yeah, I'm just actually just going to stay in this spot so they get stuck in that fire tornado because they're gonna walk towards me. Uh, but because I have, I picked up a couple items here that when I uh, get to low HP, they're gonna, going to be consumed, they're going to be eaten up. And I don't want that to happen. And so I'm gonna hopefully hold on to those. Those mini guys, mini gun guys are quite scary, heavy TF2. Uh, don't wanna deal with that. Gonna take out that flying guy. Uh, they also, those frost ones, those freezing elite enemies, also, um, yeah, gotta take this guy out. He's gonna deal so much damage. Uh, they also make you slowed on hit with that, barely. Toss out some of my glaives here to deal some additional damage to the parties surrounding. Unfortunately, they teleported away right as I did that, so I'm not going to eat a bunch of damage there. But very close to death here, 65% charge. So if I can take this teleporter boss out before the rest of it charges, just going to teleport through there so that they can't track me. Going to teleport to me now. This is just a war of teleporters in the teleporter. And what item did I get? I got a bandolier, chance to drop an ammo pack that resets all my skill cooldowns. Let's see, there's that ammo pack. So you'll see I have a, uh, I'm just gonna use this, 12 second cooldown. I pick this up and the cooldown is given right back to me. So that's quite nice. The gasoline is going to release this little fire explosion every time I kill something, which gives me some AOE. And like I said, I really need AOE. Okay, finally, I got an equipment. I can talk about this. Orange items uh, are different from the red. They're different from the, uh, the, the green, the whites. Uh, the purples right here and they are an additional ability that you can use that have a certain amount of cooldown So this one is uh, going to have at a hundred second cooldown. <gasps> There's a red item All right alien head reduces the cooldown for my skills. So that's uh, that's not bad You see this is instead of having an 11 second cooldown on this move now. I have a nine second cooldown on that move That's quite nice um, But yeah, these equipment are generally pretty powerful. That's pretty good um and uh, they have a bigger cooldown. All right, I'm gonna use this once again. You're gonna see I lost 50% of my HP. Hopefully it gives me something good. A needle tick. This is a this is an interesting item. It basically has a chance to uh, to have like this effect, this explosion effect every time I land an attack. So that's not bad. I have a lot of gold once again. So I'm going to circle back, grab some of the items that I missed previously. What's this? That's a dead body. Okay, I thought that was an item. Um, 
Oh wait, that's the, that's the used lockbox. Never mind. I was wrong on both accounts. Uh, gonna get this here, and time again is ticking up, but I do have some good items now, so that's pretty good. Uh, this right here is another drone, an incinerator drone that I can use. And I'm just going to go to this little island here. Hopefully there's some chests there that I can buy, that I can use, and this won't be a big waste of time. There's just a little guy hanging out here. I'll put you out of your misery. Um, thankfully, I didn't uh, fall or anything. I didn't miss any shots. You know, that would be quite embarrassing when you have a giant circle of a reticle that you can aim with, and there's no chests here. That is, um, that is tragic. All right, well, we're going to trek back to the teleporter now, and... Really, I have not been optimizing my gold usage. Oh, also, there's a little neat trick you can do. Oh, I'm not going to make it. JK, I jump up, and I am going to make it. There's some nice movement you can do with the Huntress. Uh, that's quite cool, because this does launch you into the air a little bit. Uh, something I could do, I think, is I could boost myself up here, and then I don't have enough height, and I'm a very bad gamer. All right, going on to stage four now, where things get quite interesting. A lot of stage fours, or every stage four, actually, has a chance for you to get a guaranteed legendary item. I already have one. I have this alien head, but more is always uh, welcome. More is always nice. And I can't use that again. Don't really want to use that. I could see if there's something here. Actually, I do think it's worth it to probably see if there's something here. Uh, if there's not, it definitely won't be worth it. But more items I do need, I think. And there's nothing. Okay, well that that is very sad. All right, just gonna take the teleporter, leave. Oh, there's that collapse, that explosion that I mentioned that I, that I picked up this item right here. Uh, what's really unique about the purple items that I didn't mention is that they corrupt. Oh, okay, I gotta watch out for that. They corrupt uh, any other items that you may have that are kind of of the same type, the same variety. And so this one you'll see corrupts the tri-tip daggers. So if I ever pick up a tri-tip dagger, uh, which, you know, I can't really explain what it looks like. It kind of just looks like a knife, but you'll know it when you see it. It's not going to give me the tri-tip dagger, and instead it's going to give me uh, an, an additional... Wow, I cannot speak. An additional stack of needle tick. Uh, and so that's what's unique about these DLC items. This is a void seed. This is also part of the DLC. Sometimes there's a chance to spawn where all of these void enemies are going to spawn. I got to clear that as well if I want to access that area because otherwise it's going to deal a billion damage to me. That guy I got to avoid because it has a giant explosion that will kill me if I walk into its range. You can see there's two void enemies left. I can see one of them right there and I can see one of them right there. So I'm going to hopefully take these guys out, get access to that little room there and I can uh, maybe get some good items, potentially. These mushrooms, they do this thing where they heal, which is kind of cringe. I want to hopefully kill this thing before it heals. I should have waited for my, actually, my cooldown on my band there. You can see it's healing faster than I'm dealing damage to it, so I just got to wait until it leaves, deal that damage right there, and then there is now more void enemies, because when they die, they have this little guy that's one. Don't corrupt this, please. I got to kill this thing before it corrupts any of these other enemies. And then, uh, let's see. There's that last guy right there. They actually attack each other. That's what's really interesting about the Void enemies. There's some lore there. I don't know anything about Risk of Rain 2 lore, but the Void is like this additional, uh, like realm with enemies that are different than the normal ones. And so they're going to attack each other, which is quite interesting. They're like a third party. Oh, there's that Lunar Coin that I mentioned. Uh, these, again, allow you to, you can keep these between runs. They allow you to get some items that are different than the ones you would otherwise get. Another Sticky Bomb. More Sticky Bomb just means a higher percent chance. Uh, to attach it, which is quite cool, quite nice. It used to deal more damage, that was really broken. These guys are gonna fly towards me and then, you know, bomb me, which I don't want. 50% uh, HP there, and I have a chance to get an item that I want. Let's see, give me something good. Um, I kinda just want this, this is gonna make me attack faster. You can see that I chose that over a green item, because I didn't really want the green item. Um, the green item is going to give me another stack of my equipment, and the equipment I have right now isn't very good, and so I don't really want more of that. I'd rather attack faster uh, to deal more damage. Also, attacking faster gives you a higher chance to attach the sticky bombs or anything like that. Uh, so there's a lot of synergies going on there. Uh, I'm going to clear all these enemies here. I'm going to take this once again, lose 50% of my HP, hopefully kill those guys before anything happens, and there we go. All right, I got a very good item there, a poly loot. You can see those little purple attacks, that's what the poly loot is doing. It has a chance to uh, strike with a lightning every time that I hit someone. And striking with lightning is all... Oh, I got caught there. They flick shot me, unfortunately. Um, that does, like, auto-aim, so I definitely could have avoided it, but wasn't wasn't too great and there's one more i'm just gonna take it once again i'm gonna throw my glaive so it hits these guys and i got a tenta bobble not a fan of that right now so i'm not gonna take it all right now i have a bunch of gold that i can use and this map does have a guaranteed red item like i mentioned so i'm gonna try and save up for that uh, it's gonna cost a lot but after i activate the teleporter it's gonna be fine more movement speed there is always great so i'm just gonna buy some chests as i peruse along can i buy this one more time please thank you and one more time okay i shouldn't have done that 
and uh, another one there. And this map does have a lot of chests. This is going to deal more damage as I'm in close range, but I'm not really a close range character, so that's unfortunate. 505 there. Uh, okay, this is not the guaranteed chest, but I got another red. Uh, yeah, people do say that I get insane luck in this game, which I'm going to say that in a future video, and I'm going to say that that's the first time I've said that. But this is not the first Risk of Rain 2 video that I'm recording. That one is going up later. Don't really want to print that. More chests, more chests, more chests. Uh, this is going to heal me up when I get to low HP, but it's going to be used uh, when that happens. It's one of those items that I mentioned. I have another one of those that deals more damage, but it breaks when I uh, am at low HP. And what's nice is these two synergize. I actually have them back to back. The Delicate Watch and the Power Elixir. So if I get to low HP, I'm going to miss out on... Uh, or I'm going to use one of my elixirs before I lose this watch. That might be confusing, don't worry about it if it is. Uh, and you can see right there, I have the encrusted key, and so that's going to corrupt the rusted key that I just picked up. Right now I'm kind of just perusing, looking for uh, the area where the legendary chest can spawn. It can spawn in like one of five areas, but have not found it yet. Uh, I think I know where it is now. Normally with normal graphic settings, you can just tell because there's going to be these bright lights that show up, but I don't have normal graphic settings because I am not a, uh, a normal person. If it isn't evident wow they're they're still shooting at me from all the way across the map i think it's gonna be here and if it's not gonna be here it's gonna be at the top of that tree so let's just check here real quick there it is all right this is going to cost me 4047 which i think i can definitely get i'm just gonna take the teleporter and if i don't get to 4047 i can always just leave the teleporter make it keep on counting up and then i just uh, wait until i until I do. I can also hit this, which will give me some additional gold. It'll spawn some enemies. Let's hit this teleporter. You can see the little particles there. There's going to be, I think, a bunch of bosses that spawn. Let's see how many it is. It's going to be two. Two bosses spawn because we're at a higher difficulty now. It's not going to give me two items. Uh, if I did hit that shrine of the mountain, I would have gotten four bosses from this because it's going to make it twice as hard. But you can see I'm dealing a bunch of damage now. I got some good items. And so uh, this guy is going to be melted away. A lot of that is due to the poly loot that I picked up that I mentioned, that little guitar there, purple guitar. Uh, what's really cool about the poly loot is the item that it corrupts. Again, these pink and purple items just corrupt uh, items or their, their counterparts. Uh, that one is also really good. That one is like AOE damage and this one is single target damage. So you can kind of choose between the two depending on what you need. And I really needed single target damage. I wasn't dealing enough. Uh, and speaking of AOE, this is going to help me out with some more AOE. Every time they die, big explosion that's going to uh, deal damage to other enemies. And now I'm starting to do pretty good. 27 minutes into the run, and I feel like this is turning out quite good. Two more stages until the final boss, uh, and so I'm going to uh, hopefully get powerful enough to deal with that guy and uh, wait around for more enemies to spawn. Once again, I kind of need more gold. Uh, so I don't want this to charge to 100% before I get to 4,000. Although I am doing okay on red items. Like, I don't actually really need more. But, of course, if they're legendary, they're very strong. I didn't even mention what this one does. Uh, it's more AoE, basically. Every time I hit an enemy, there's a chance they get hooked like that to other ones and brought inward. It just deals a bunch of damage. That, I just hit that thing, which is going to spawn enemies, like I mentioned, to hopefully get some gold. I don't know where they spawn, though. Where, where did they go? Where are they? It's like, it's like I summon clay dune striders, which is like, I'm at the point where normal enemies that are spawning are actually just boss enemies. But uh, I don't know where it is. I don't really feel like looking for it, I'm going to be honest. Which I might need to. We'll see. Also, killing elite enemies gives you more gold, so I'm going to focus those guys. Alright, we're nearing 90% there. I gotta be careful. Uh, and you remember how little damage I was dealing to these mushrooms before? Check this out now. Bada bing, bada boom. Eliminated. On site. Uh, 3701, I think I should be safe. Let's see how much gold do I get for killing this. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not doing the, I'm not the best at calculating exactly how much I need, but I need 4047, right? I pinged it. Oh, I can't, I, I don't have time to scroll up right now. Oh, there's the big clay dune shrider. Okay, I'm going to be fine on money because I can always kill that thing. So, yeah, just going to stay in this range here. Actually, summon some drones with my equipment ability. Just clean up some of these, uh, targets here and looks like I don't even need to just these guys are going to be enough I'm going to go back to where that legendary chest was hopefully it gives me something good I got some more movement items I'm a little bit faster now it is not here I thought it was here I forgot I'm going to go back up to the top of the screen the top of the map teleport around what's nice about Huntress is she is quite mobile uh, but she's a, she's not actually the fastest or the most mobile character in the game I already recorded a video with that one give me something good that is pretty good this is going to permanently reduce the armor uh, which is basically going to deal more damage. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. That is permanently reducing the armor of these enemies here. And that will allow me to deal even more damage. It's a bit of a debuff. 
Uh, looks like this randomly spawned. There's a chance that this randomly spawns a blue portal instead of the teleporter. So I'll just take that to show you exactly what it is. You can also find little altars to automatically spawn this blue portal on every map if you want to. Uh, but I didn't do that on the first stage. You may remember there's this little guy that kind of looked like this. I said I'm probably not going to talk about this, but looks like I will anyway. Uh, and this gives you the lunar shop. So basically, this, these are all lunar items that you can buy with the lunar coins. So I'll show you. You can also refresh this, and it's going to reduce the number of lunar coins that I have now. Again, these are things that you pick up between runs. You also have a chance to trade in some items here, trade in some items here. This is going to be white items for a green, green items for a red, and then a chance to choose the next stage. But because I'm at the stage five, there's only one stage five that's available, and so I can't choose. There's only one. Uh, but otherwise, you would have some options to choose exactly where you want to go. So you can kind of tailor your run if you so choose. This is Sky Meadow. Sky Meadow is a beautiful stage. Uh, it looks wonderful. I got two Void Seeds this time, which is kind of crazy. What I just used is a Scrapper, and that allows you to trade in your item for nothing. It just gives you this Scrap item that does nothing. But if you use a Printer, instead of randomly choosing one of the items that you have that maybe you want to keep, it's just going to use that. And so you can kind of, again, tailor your runs, control the RNG a little bit, or at least a little bit more than you would be able to otherwise. Uh, and so that's, I think, a very, very nice thing in the game. It wasn't always there. It's a very nice addition. Uh, but I'm going to try and kill these void enemies so I can actually access this part of the map and buy these things because you can't buy them until uh, you buy that. These guys are quite dangerous. I'm going to try and avoid that at all costs. KO that thing. This thing is even more dangerous. This is an Elder Lemurian. So it's a, uh, you know, when you hear Elder, you just think that guy's probably pretty strong. Like the Elder Ring. <laughs> that's not the game name. I know that! Okay, I, okay, never mind. I deal a billion damage. I wasn't worried at all. Uh, this guy is a Gup. One of my favorite enemies in the game. Not only does it give you a billion gold when you kill it, but you can probably imagine what happens when that guy dies. He's gonna spawn two little mini Guffs. And you can probably imagine what happens when this guy dies. He's gonna spawn two little minier Guffs. Um, but yeah, I'm dealing a lot of damage right now to a lot of things. There's a lot of things happening on the screen. The meat hook that I got is going to deal a lot. I'm just going to activate this while this is happening. These guys are going to teleport close to me, which I really don't want because these purple elite enemy... Oh my god. What is this? I just got like one of the rarest items in the entire game. Um, I have never gotten that before. <laughs> Every time I, I feel like I record with this game, my RNG is insane. Okay, I'm going to pick that up because I never have before. Oh my god, these guys are just like so close to me, it's crazy. I don't even know what it does. I like, I wish I could tell you I knew what it did and I could give you some information, but I don't even know what it does because it's so rare. Basically, every time you kill an elite enemy, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny percent chance that they drop their elite aspect, which is like if someone is flaming, is blazing, you turn into a fire beast. If someone is freezing, you turn into a freezing beast. And I just killed a void enemy. Wait, what? Where is it? So I'm going to turn into a void beast. Where is it? Wait, I am so stupid. I'm so dumb. This is the thing that I just bought. Okay, ignore everything I just said. None of this is getting cut out either. You gotta see my idiocy. Um, I have goldfish memory. Okay, well, this is the thing we already saw that I bought like three times in the past. So, um, I guess I'll get this. I'm not embarrassed. It's, it's okay. <laughs> If you're new to Risk Rain 2, you're probably so confused. This guy's just hiding in his shell, so I can't target him. I'm so sorry. I just wasted so much time, too. So, we're the difficulty right now is just laughing at me. Let's kill these void enemies, please. That is beyond embarrassing. At the very least, this means you can never get mad at me for forgetting something, because it's very evident that I forget everything. So, there's that, there's that little portal there. I'm not going to buy it this time, because... Uh, wow, another encrusted key. That's actually not going to help me, because it spawns on the next stage. There's only one stage left. You can never get mad at me for forgetting something, because this just shows you that this is how I actually am. This is my actual memory. I have goldfish brain. More lens makers is more crit chance. That's always good. 40% chance at the moment. Now I just got to say things. That, oh my god. Okay. Okay. It, everything's fine. Um, I guess I'm just buying this. I haven't yet to use this regenerating scrap, so I haven't shown that off. I'm just going to pretend like I know what I'm doing now. Good lord. Good lord. Let's let's kill these things. They're gonna show me on the map where they are. These guys are quite dangerous. You can kind of see the bigger the enemy is, generally speaking, the scary. Oh my god! Give me a 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 give me a. Oh, I used one of my. I, I I got the low HP. I used one of my little potions there, unfortunately. All right, let's 
kill these guys. These guys are gonna suction me in and reduce all of my movement speed, lock me in place as you just saw, so I gotta be careful about that. I'm gonna do a bit of wall peeking here, you know, corner, corner peeking. Jiggle peeking is the word. Uh, avoid that. Avoid that thing. That thing's gonna one hit kill me. Um, one of the rare things that can one hit kill. Two enemies left. Where are they? They're on, they're on the other side of the map. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on from this. I mean, everything that I said is technically still true, that the thing that would drop there is the rarest, like one of the rarest items in the game, but it just wasn't what I was thinking of. Wait, where are they? Oh, here's one of them. Here's the last one. All right, let me get in this void fog here. 50% HP, whatever. Give me something good. Give me something good. Um, I'll get another delicate watch, deal more damage here. Uh, I should not take that because it's going to leave me with 50% HP, which is going to make me break the thing that I just picked up. Kill that guy. More enemies spawn behind me. I could hear them, I think. Never mind. I'm an idiot. This music is jamming. I'm going to replace a couple of my items here with this scrapper because I really don't want them. Um, there will be an opportunity on the final level to trade in some of these scraps, so I'm kind of banking on that. I'm gonna kill this guy right here. I'm going to kill all these little mushrooms here. I've not been playing this stage very well. If it isn't evident by the huge mistake that I just made. I just got excited, okay? I'm sorry. I, I should stop talking about it by now, but I'm kind of lost. And the music is also jamming. It's keeping me in the moment. Another one of these. I really don't really want it, but I'm going to pick it up. Regardless, because I guess it's not bad to have it. Uh, the reason why I didn't want it is because this will uh, sacrifice itself or this will be traded in for a green item and I won't be able to get rid of the green item. You can't get rid of any of these purples in that scrapper. And I was hoping maybe I could find the green one and then I'll be able to get rid of it and have a chance to get something better in the future by scrapping it, but could not find any of that. It's going to just lock an, a, an enemy in place, which is pretty good for the final boss. And so I'll take that. Don't really want that. That's more defense. I don't think I need that. Um, it's like flat defense value. More chests, more chests. Another key, which I also really don't need. A war horn, which I also really don't need, I think. Alright, not getting too good RNG on this level, unfortunately. More gasoline. This actually won't help me on the final boss at all. And so, uh, because it's gonna be on kill, but if I can't, if I'm only shooting the final boss, I'm not killing anything. I'm gonna save that void, void potential, these void cradles for hopefully after the final boss here. And if you do want to loop, what you can do, you can just hit this teleporter. It's gonna shift the destination, but I'm not gonna loop at all. Let's see, what is this? A bundle of fireworks. Grandparent, this is gonna be a big guy that I'm gonna do a lot of damage to right away, luckily. Um, and this has a giant AOE explosion that I'm gonna hopefully uh, try and avoid. I'm gonna wait a little bit before using this ballista again, because I do want to wait for that to charge. Unfortunately, just be existing dealt enough damage to those guys but um yeah he's out of my range right now so i'm gonna just back up a little bit so i don't die to any of these guys he's uh shooting these balls at me and deal a bunch of damage with the ballista i think i'm just going to wait for the ballista to charge i really don't want to take a big risk here because i could eat a bunch of damage real quick once again waiting for that and that should do it there we go easy boss i didn't have him deal any big damage or anything and i'm getting a lot of items that i really do not want to use uh, and so i'm going to scrap all of these and then hopefully get something good on the final level that I can use to KO the final boss. 37 minutes in. Um, my time efficiency has not been the best, but that's okay. Teleport there, pick that thing up, reset my cooldowns. And now just kite around. It may seem like with the amount of damage I was doing to that grandparent that the final boss will be easy peasy lemon squeezy. But this final boss is quite the monster. His name is Mithrix. Quite the demon, you could say. We've seen that teleporter event happen enough. No need to uh, replay it over and over again. There's a big gup right there. Hopefully it doesn't get infected by these things. I'm going to kill it before. Uh, I don't really want that item. It's going to take away my crit glasses for a chance to instantly kill. But it can't instantly kill bosses. And if my goal is to kill the final boss, and I'm getting rid of my crit chance for a chance to insta-kill, but it won't even insta-kill, what, uh, what, what even matters anymore? You know, what is life without you by my side? Uh, oh, I should probably should not get rid of that. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of a lot of my items that uh, do something on kill. Because again, if I'm not killing anything, killing the final boss, how much is it gonna help me? That might have actually been a mistake now that I think about it, because the final boss is not like I, I just go to the level and then I kill the final boss. Um, I'm realizing that now, but that's okay. That's fine, get rid of this, uh, this thing, because I got rid of my explosion. That's gonna make uh, fire deal more damage, and if I'm not dealing fire damage, then don't really need that. This is gonna give me speed on kill, which again, don't really need that. And uh, I'm building up a good amount of scrap here to hopefully trade in. More HP, don't really need that. You know, more HP is, is good for sure, but uh, honestly, if I get hit to low HP, I kind of want less. 
Because if I have less HP, it'll take less to heal me back up to max and give me this one-shot protection. Um, so it kind of depends on where you are in the run. Right now, I kind of don't really want that much HP, I think. Um, then again, I don't think things are just going to one-shot me right away. Uh, but regardless, I got some uh, some good trade-in scrap there. I think that's about what I want to do. I'm going to... I saw there were some more items on the map that I can pick up. And I'll get those. Yep, right there. Some more items. This final stage, stage 5, has a billion chests. Unfortunately, I did get those two Void Seeds, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, which takes up a lot of the, the credits. Oh, there's that Chrono Bubble that's gonna go to this. Um, that could be gone into, like, giving me chests. I never want to look at this again. But, uh, oh, fell down here. But there could be some chests here. Unfortunately, looks like there are not. Sometimes there's an additional whole level that spawns there. Um, but, you know, now it's very quiet. This is like the calm before the storm. Did I end up getting this void potential over here? I think I did, but just to be safe, I'm going to check. And regardless, I kind of want to get rid of this thing. Anyway, this requires me to stand still in order to heal, which I don't really want to stand still. That sounds dangerous. Um, then again, I don't really have that much healing. I only have this. So healing is going to be really rough now that I think about it. So hopefully I don't get put into a situation where I'm in dire straits, but looks like I did get it. So I'm just going to take this jump pad leap over here is there any chests here i'm not even gonna bother with you guys no i already got this stuff i think there is one more on like the level above me i believe this is going to be an incinerator drone might as well i have so much money oh yes i found something nice kill these little mini guys that spawn once again give me another stack of needle tick why don't you and uh i think oh and there's one more okay well now i have to like wait to heal up unfortunately that is uh that sucks Oh, I found a little green scrap here. Okay, I can use this regenerating scrap to buy this. That's not bad. Uh, I could trade in this item, but I think I'm just going to keep it. Because this, when I get hit to low HP, it's going to make me invisible. And uh, being invisible is quite nice because then they can't hit you for a short period of time. And I have a feeling I'm going to be hit to low HP. So, you know what? I don't think it's worth waiting. I'm just going to go up to the final level here. I probably should not have gotten rid of the thing that heals me because then I could have used it to uh, heal up and use that void potential. But that's okay. On to the final level now. And this map has a beautiful song that takes a long time to build up so we're gonna wait patiently for that but this is the final level we're up on the moon of the planet that we were just teleporting around on uh to face the final boss gravity is lower here uh enemies are unique here there's gonna be this guy which is really dangerous and the ship that i can use to escape is covered in this bubble until i kill the final boss so i'm gonna take out this guy because it's quite dangerous like i said uh, before it even has a chance to see me and in order to gain access to that which is the final boss, I need to find a way to rescue the ship by activating some teleporters, uh, get to the final boss, rescue the ship, all that. Uh, little mini teleporter events. This is my least favorite part of Risk Rain 2, in all honesty. You can see there's some sky beams, which will indicate where these teleporters are. Uh, unfortunately, these ones take away my HP, and like I said, I don't really have a good consistent way of healing, so that's actually going to be a little bit dangerous there. I'm going to just go over there. And there are the items that I can trade in in this area. And so, uh, unfortunately, it's giving me a sentient meat hook, which I already have. Uh, so that's not going to help me all too much. Hopefully, it's going to give me something else as well, something else I can trade in. Um, but there is another enemy right there. These are perfected enemies. They're a unique elite that I have yet to see in this run. Um, they're only available on the moon. Oh my god, it's just chunking me like crazy. I got to be so careful about these things. They deal so much damage, as you could just see right there. And I'm going to look for some healing. That's healing, but it's only in a teleporter event, which honestly I might even use because these are little mini teleporter events. Where is this big flying guy? Sentient Meat Hook again, I already have. These guys are going to hunt me down. What is this? More Shuriken is more damage. Uh, this I can trade in a red for a white item or a few stacks of white items. Oh my god. Okay, well, I already lost my, uh, my potion there, which is unfortunate. This is not boding well for this final boss, I'm going to be honest here. But if I can kill this thing real quick. It has a big shield, so shield is going to heal it up after some time. And do some cutting around in there. That song is, uh, is starting to peek through. It's a great song. Gotta kill this guy. Um, getting rid of a lot of my damage items is not the smartest move, I will admit. But that's okay. Hopefully I can kill this guy now and see if there's any more items at the top of this thing that I can potentially uh, get trade in. Let's see, there is a ukulele, which is actually really good. I'm going to get that because that is going to give me more stacks of my poly loot and more stacks of my poly loot just means more damage, more damage I could really, really use right now. So there we go. There we go. How many is that? I've got uh, three poly loots. Okay, I'm going to activate this little mini teleporter, like I said. 
and... Oh, Harvester Scythe. Okay, I'm going to buy this because this is healing right here. This, every time I deal damage, I can't believe I didn't see that. Every time I deal a crit, it's going to heal me. Like I said at the start of the start of the game, uh, there's some items that, you know, synergize with crit. And this is one of them. Oh my god. I probably need more. And that invisibility is helping me out here. Oh my god. This is looking rough. I might die before I even reach the final boss. I think I wasted so much time in this run, but it still is salvageable. I just gotta kill that guy before it kills me. Peek in there. Avoid any uh, any big laser beam that could shoot at me. Oh, there it is. There's a, it's going with a minigun. Anything with a minigun in this game is pretty pretty darn scary, as we saw earlier. It's gonna shoot it once again. I'm going to kite back and forth, like I mentioned. It's gonna charge it up again. Those poly loots coming in clutch. There we go. Took it out. Okay, I'm gonna activate this mini teleporter here. Is it even worth? I think it's worth. I didn't lose any crit for this. Okay, this thing is gonna repeatedly push me back. I've hit that by accident. That's unfortunate. Okay. This is gonna repeatedly push me around, but I can teleport to kind of mitigate it a little bit at the very least. I'm gonna hopefully not get too low HP here. And this healing was pretty clutch. I think I will need this. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, that was really intense. Uh, but I think there's a chance that I can still win this. I think there's a chance. Uh, I gotta play well. I gotta play real well. The best I've ever played, but there's a chance. Again, I'm on Monsoon difficulty, which is that hard base difficulty, so things can be a bit rough. Before I hit this thing, I think I want to take these guys out, because I don't want them to kill me while I'm doing this charge. I don't want to actually accidentally take any of these shuriken either, because that's going to trade in more of my white items. I got really lucky with what I traded in, I'm pretty, I, I think, so pretty happy with that. I did lose my sticky bombs, sadly, which is a bunch of damage, but I really needed that heal. Oh, another one spawned! Luckily, this one isn't perfected. You can see it doesn't have that uh, unique outline or anything, so not gonna oh i jumped too high there not gonna have that unique uh hp bar or that ability to slow me and, and mark me for death which that thing did in, in the past let's see i'm just gonna take this out right away actually that move is pretty dangerous as you get to later parts of the game that jump up move because it locks you uh in that jump up place there you don't want to be locked in place against any enemies that can potentially deal a billion damage to you especially these guys that uh that target you and then leave this big explosion on the ground all right 67 percent you can tell this charge is a lot faster than some of the other teleporter events. This is very intense. The final boss is going to be a struggle. If I die to the final boss, that's okay. I had a good run. I had a pretty good run. And I think I uh, I did all right with the commentary, I feel like, at least for an introduction to the game, you know, further. Oh, I forgot I have this. Maybe this will be a game changer, we'll see. Please, give me something good, give me something good. I mean, that's not bad. This is gonna give me a bit of a shield and every time I have a shield, I shoot a little mini missile. I could have gotten another stack of poly loot, um, but I didn't have the thing that this is traded in for, which normally I would uh, I would not want to get rid of, and so that's uh, I feel pretty good about that. Unfortunately, these pillars are going to deal. Yeah, there's no other available. Looks like these are the only ones I can take. Normally, I'm a big fan of these because these charge the fastest, but it charges in exchange for my HP, which, as we saw, is not the best situation. It's going to trade away that um, shield that I have, and so I'm not going to be able to deal those missile damage. That missile damage, rather. And I'm gonna just kite in and out until there's enemies that I can siphon HP from, um, because I have that crit healing. And uh, I don't wanna lose too much HP all at once. Um, so I'm just gonna heal up, then go back in for a little bit, wait for some enemies to spawn. And you can tell it's already at 45%, which is not bad. Um, do I risk it? Do I risk it? Okay, well, I don't think that was worth it. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. My incinerator drone. Okay, there we go. Some enemies spawning, luckily. Unfortunately, as I'm waiting, the game is getting harder and harder, but that's okay. There's that left on Daisy helping me out here, giving me some extra HP as the thing uh, activates. There we go. Finish that one. Final pillar now. Final boss is looking within shooting distance. Gold really does not matter on this final level unless you have something that like deals damage as you have gold. There's an equipment that does that. I really did not get... Okay, avoid. Avoid. You see this guy? You avoid. This guy is... Danger number one. That guy is danger number two. All right, doing a lot of teleporting. There's that big tanky guy that I can siphon HP from. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Give me some HP, big man, big man. Thank you very much. I'm going to heal some more, siphon some more HP. This is the slowest I've ever done the moon, by the way. I've never been in this situation where I'm like this, this level of power, which is not that powerful, at uh, this late into the game, because I've been doing all these explanations and so. Um, all right, fully charged the teleporter. We'll see how well I do against this final boss. You can see now these sky beams are instead in locations like this with a jump pad. The music has kicked back in. <sighs> We're in for quite the battle. 
50 minutes in. This is quite a long video. The longest video I've recorded for the VOD channel so far. But I guess it is fitting. There's a little shop here that you can buy some lunar items. I'm not going to do so. I'm just going to fight the boss straight up here. Jump up. Mithrix. Let's see what you have to offer here. There's a little item you can get right there. A little uh, log book for some lore if you want. Little neat tidbit there. Also, I didn't even mention this, but what I love about Risk of Rain 2 is every item you get just gets put on your physical character model. It's such a nice art direction, art design for the game. It was in Risk of Rain 1 as well, but this one is 3D. All right, so he's gonna shoot some lasers at me, I think, pretty soon. No, he's just gonna come forward with a big hammer slam. I should not have gotten hit by that because it was the most telegraphed attack in the world. Then again, I get hit by hammer sidelights and, and sword sidelights all the time. So I'm just gonna stay up here. You can tell he dealt a billion damage to me. So I'm a kind of scared. I'm a kind of scared, but I'm gonna stay up here. I think the laser beam comes in a later phase, which I guess I spoiled. There's multiple phases to this boss, but it wouldn't be a modern boss without multiple phases. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, I'm actually dealing a bunch of damage. Um, these polyloots are helping out and I'm very scared. Actually, I have enough HP now to survive a big hit. So I'm gonna do that one. Deal a bunch of damage there. He's gonna leap into the sky and do this little thing that's gonna do a shockwave on the ground, so I wanna avoid that. Luckily, I'm high enough where it doesn't really matter. I can just jump up like that. There are the laser beams. I knew it. I knew it was coming. And I should have probably stayed up here so that he would chase me up and then miss. Don't wanna get hit by that big hammer slam. Some of my little mini guys here. Uh, oh, there's the freeze in place that I got from the item earlier. Like I said, that's gonna help with the final boss. He's gonna jump up, uh, but luckily I froze him in place so he's not gonna chase me any further. He's so gonna do a big dash. There's the big dash. Knew it was coming. All right, freeze him in place once again. And, uh, avoid that. You can tell he's he's just trash talking me in the in the post game chat. Look at that scream vermin primitive scrap. Imagine being so egotistical. All right, gonna avoid that Mithrix. Um, okay, I did not avoid <laughs> or I did not land where I wanted to land. So he's gonna chase me. I'm gonna teleport through him like that. He's gonna fall. He fell off so hard. He actually took fall damage there. That's something you can do in, in a different alternative game mode, which is even more difficult. There's something that makes fall damage doubled and lethal, and you can kind of use that to cheese out Mythrix a little bit, make him take a bunch of fall damage so he just dies. There we go. Looks like he's, uh, oh, never mind. I was going to say about to die here, but he leaped into the sky. He has 183 armor debuffs, which is quite helpful. 186 now. There he goes. Death now. Second phase. Second phase, he's going to summon a bunch of minions on a lot of these guys. So I'm going to take these guys out before they even have a chance to see me, hopefully. That one's going to die pretty quick. Uh, little mini guys as well um, and this is where having those items could have helped where i can kill like a lot of enemies at once or a lot of aoe but i'm happy with trading in what i did i think that was the right move oh i didn't see that one there but i kind of knew it was there you know it's like a, it's just a gut feeling you got unfortunately i have a lot of these uh glaives that i really don't need because most of the time when i'm fighting against mythrix it's just one and this is going to deal more damage as it bounces to multiple enemies but it can't bounce to the same enemy twice so, but I can use it here. Oh god, I'm at, uh, I am low. Why are you here? Okay, 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 okay. I gotta hit something to heal. I gotta hit something to heal. Maybe this little mini guy. This shield is gonna regenerate after like seven seconds being out of combat, and that's gonna once again give me those missiles, so that's quite helpful. Heal off that guy. This guy is right here for some reason. And believe it or not, this is not the scariest part yet. Not even close, in fact. This is this is like third in, in line so far. Usually, most of the time, this is the easiest phase in the boss fight, but because I don't deal the most amount of damage or have the most amount of, like, cross-screen coverage because it's kind of on cooldown with that, I don't have infinite range on my bow. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit worrying, but looks like I'm able to make it out mostly unscathed, you know. I didn't, I didn't die, so. Why did I jump up into your range? I don't know, but I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm gonna heal off you. Final few guys to KO here. He's gonna spawn back before I kill everything, I believe, because, or at the very least, more things are gonna spawn uh, as he comes back around. So I gotta be careful about that in this next phase. Kill that one. Looks like there's one left. Actually, I do need to kill everything here. And then he's gonna spawn back. And then he's gonna spawn more. And so it's gonna be like phase three is like combining phase two and phase one, except there's actually even more attacks I have to avoid from him. He's gonna charge forward here, uh, try and kill me, unless I lock him in place. Charge forward here, like I said. Oh, actually he dashed, he's, he's attacking my drone now. My little drone boy. That is um, that is actually kind of nice, because I don't have to worry about him coming to hit me. Okay, well, here he comes. There he goes. Imagine missing so badly like that, Mithrix. Could not be me. Um, I do have to be careful here. I'm gonna send out these in case there's any enemies nearby. He's gonna leap up the air, do that thing once again, where he slams the ground, does that little, Blast. Now he's gonna chase forward. 
uh, to try and hit me and do something very, very terrifying very, very soon. Which is oh, okay, every time he slams now, it shoots those little things on the ground. And now, this is the pizza move. I gotta avoid all of these big pizzas with some good movement, hopefully, and then I don't uh, die to this. And there we go, I got out of it okay, now he's gonna try and hit me again, which I do wanna avoid. Uh, because, you know, I don't want to die. That would be that would be great. Excellent commentary going on right here. I don't want to get hit because I don't want to die. He's, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, he's coming. I'm just running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I got a lot of practice in Brawlhalla. Trust me. You can't catch me. All right. Gonna wait for my second charge there so I can get twice in a row because I thought he's gonna dash me like he did. That was actually very good timing. It was way too close for comfort. All right. 87 stacks. The more I hit him, the more he's gonna get an armor debuff, the more damage I can do. Unfortunately, he went up to the sky there. I can actually hit him as you can see there. But I can wait for him to come back down and then use that move right there. Once again, he's going to do this charge with the laser beams. I'm going to try and avoid it. He's going to do a big slam, slam a and then do the big pizza move. The closer I am to him, generally, like, it's like, it's, uh, gets a bit easier to avoid this, I feel like. Because you can kind of see exactly where it is. And so I really don't want to get hit here. I do still have one shot protection. He's going to do big slam and, uh. Gotta avoid that once again. Big damage there, big damage, big damage, big damage is good, big damage is great. He missed me once again. I think I can kill him now before he does that pizza move once again, because if he jumps up right now, uh, I can kill him, or I can just kill him right now, right here, right here, right here, right here, right now. All right, and now is the final phase. He's weakened. He's so weak. And so, like the desperate man he is, he takes all of my items to use for himself and I have to hit him to get them back. This is honestly quite scary because I had some items that deal damage over time and one shot protection will not help me if I got hit by damage over time. So I'm just gonna hang back, do some ballistas there, hopefully get some back. That shuriken, so close actually. Um, he's gonna inch closer and closer and deal some moves that uh, have some damage. You can see the shield is healing him, but at the very least I'm dealing some damage. I really wanna avoid these shurikens. I'm gonna wait for a shuriken, see if he throws it out. There we go, all right. That Shuriken does have auto-aim. I got my crit glasses back, that's good. That was actually so close. I'm playing this pretty risky. If that Shuriken hits me, I think I lose. I think I just straight up lose. Okay, oh my god. Jesus. Jesus. One, two, three, Shuriken. There it is. Oh my god, I'm so scared. I could play this riskier, get closer in range, but I really, I really think I just straight up die. So. Oh my god. No, I fell! <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I should not have used that. Now I'm on 11 second cooldown because he took my items that make the cooldown shorter. I'm just gonna wait in the air there. Hopefully not get into any range where he's gonna- He's gonna do something eventually that shoots balls on the ground that can deal damage to me. So I'm worried about that. Where's the shuriken? Where's the shuriken? Shoot a shuriken, buddy. <gasps> oh my god! Why is he so close now? Okay. 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 <laughs> you got a shuriken charge. There it's not- it's not there anymore. Deal some damage, please. That was a crit. Okay, I got my band back. Um, I'm gonna summon my drones when I see him next. God, oh my god. This is like a nightmare. <laughs> Aye! Okay, 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 okay. I don't wanna do the ballista. I don't wanna do the ballista. I'm just shooting him like literally one damage at a time. Avoid. Oh, I got my key. I can't do anything with the key. Okay, incinerator drone. Go, go, buddy, go, go, yes. My drones. Okay, he's gonna shoot big balls on the ground. I gotta avoid that. My drones, my drones. Yes, my big boys. Oh my god. I actually just avoided that. Okay. Um, this is risky, but I want to avoid those balls. Okay, I, I got the I got the armor piercing. Yes. Yes. Get my shurikens. Get my shurikens, please. Please. With these guys. Oh my god. This is so like this is this is intense, man. This is intense, man. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Goodbye. Oh yes. Okay. Now. It's still not over, because while I killed the big boy Mithrix, I still gotta get to my ship. Escape! 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 Do everything I can 900 meters away. I have two minutes left before the entire moon explodes. Just go, just go. And now, the pizzas are everywhere because the moon is exploding. And because Mithrix is gone, he's like the protector of the planet, all of these void enemies from the void realm are invading. They're gonna try and kill me. The planet's gonna try and kill me. Everything is going wrong, except so far, this run is still alive, despite everything that could have made it uh, completely die, including me thinking that I got a void drop, when in reality it was the thing that I bought 20 seconds ago. I still haven't forgotten about this. The final teleporter event charging this rescue ship so it does not get killed. And now I can finally take a bit of a deep breath because it is nearly impossible to lose here. 
Uh, I should not say that. But generally speaking, it's very difficult to lose here. And it's kind of like a last hurrah, a celebration sequence. I'm just happy that I won. It was really, really scary. I thought I was going to die to those Lunar Chimeras in the sky. You can see this thing. One hit kills. I didn't even mention, but you can actually bait enemies to get into this one hit kill. And then one hit kill enemies by killing this in the right spot. There's some really neat stuff you can do in this game. But at the very least, that was Risk Rain 2. MVP goes to my Incinerator Drone. Incinerator Drone which survived with one HP on those blood shrines or whatever. Blood teleporter events. We're gonna skip these credits here. Get to this victory screen here. Oh, so satisfying. 61 minutes, Huntress, Monsoon, a million damage plus, and that's a victory.